And we are back. Welcome, my friend, to a brand new episode of Dieting from the Inside Out. If you are new around these parts, my name is Jared Hamilton, and I am super excited that you were here in the house um, because I just really value your time and attention. It's two of the most valuable things we can offer another person. So I'm really grateful that you're giving yours to me for the next, I don't know, however long this episode is. But anyway, I really appreciate you nonetheless. Now, welcome to Dieting from the Inside Out. This is where, if you're newer here, this is where we're going to put diet culture to shame and we're going to show you that the true way to get to where you want to be is not through the normal methodologies of weight loss, right? Like actually, to be honest, I need to come up with a really good catchphrase for like dieting from the inside out, like that kind of thing. But no, in all reality, the reason, the reason I, I, I created the show and the reason that the show is here is because your issues um, that are stopping you from losing the weight you want to lose, feeling amazing, living the life that you're supposed to live, being happy and thriving, let's be honest, have nothing to do with weight loss right? Like if I snap my fingers right now and the 50 pounds you're trying to lose comes off, more than likely you would not be good, right? I ask that question a lot, to be honest with you. And almost every person I ask goes, oh, yeah, yeah I know I would not be good. I'd still be binge eating. I'd still be uh, scared I'm going to gain my weight, my weight back. I'd still feel shame eating ice cream with my partner because um, ice cream is bad. Or I would still be self-deprecative. I still wouldn't be happy. Like all of that kind of stuff. So that's why dieting from the inside out is here. So we can actually get you to where you want to be um, in an actual way that's going to work and not the old bullshit that you've been doing. So welcome to the show. I'm really grateful for you. Now, I have a really cool, cool episode lined up for you today. But before we get into all that, we do need a really big uh, thank you to the sponsors of the show. Sponsor number one is Flex Pro Meals. And without them, my fridge would be very, very empty right now. Um, actually, it's funny. Like I, every meal I eat is not Flex Pro. Like a lot of people ask if all I eat is Flex Pro Meals. And of course not. Um, but like, I, it's one of those things where having Flex Pro in my fridge all the time on deck is so helpful. Like, you know, like the, the one or two times a day that like I either don't want to make food or I'm between meetings or I'm, you know, getting ready to leave and I need to grab a meal and get out of the house, like just that kind of stuff. Um, and, and on top of it, it saves me way more money than, uh, than, you know, because of fast food. Like I'm telling you guys, I, uh, I, I was with some friends last night. I went to jujitsu. A few of my jujitsu training partners and some friends of mine, we wanted to go um, over to this cigar bar that's right in the in, in my hometown. So we did that. We we went and rolled into jujitsu, then popped over there, had a cigar, a drink, and just hung out. And it was a great night. Um, but because I was hungry as fuck on the way home, I decided, I'm like, you know what? I haven't eaten that much today, and I'm really, really hungry. I've got like a 30-minute drive home. So I'm just going to swing through Taco Bell because that's the only thing open at midnight. Um, and my meal was like... I just got a regular meal and it was like $15. Right. And I'm like, well, since when is fast food this expensive? You know? So, um, that's the other nice thing with flex pro. Like if I would have had a flex pro, it would have been the equivalent of like six to $8. So it would have literally been almost half of what normal fast food is. And I promise you flex pro would have tasted better. It would have been way more, ca way lower calories. It would have been way higher protein and I wouldn't feel so shitty today. So not shitty, like emotionally, like, ah, oh, shame on me. Like shitty as in it's Taco Bell. Like my body hates me. Like I'm just like, Ugh, like feeling sluggish. But anyway, nonetheless, huge Huge props to Flex Pro for keeping me taken care of. If you guys are into that kind of thing and would like to have some meals ready to go, that way you don't have to think, have to think about it as much and not have to spend so much money in the drive through then uh, definitely go check out their website or click the link below, flexpromeals.com. And you can use my code HamiltonTrained and you'll save yourself an additional 20% at checkout, which is pretty dope. Then we need to have a big thank you from our second sponsor, which is First Form, um, best clothes ever, but to be honest, their supplements are even better. <laughs> um, no, First Form is amazing, guys. I absolutely love the whole crew at First Form, HQ, uh, Andy Frisell, the whole the whole squad over there. They keep me taken care of um, because you and I both know like supplements aren't everything, but they do have their time in their place. They help fill so many gaps, especially from a very basic level. Like if you can't get enough protein in, like having a good supplement for that, you, you let's say you benefit a lot from having bars or, or meat sticks or things like that on the go. That way you can just throw in your purse and th they're taken care of there too. Like legitimately their protein bars are the best I've like ever had in my life. And I'm not just saying that because they sponsor me, like try it for yourself. Like they even have a 110% money back guarantee. So like no one else does that. So like if you go to try their stuff and you're not happy with it, they have a, have a 110% back money back guarantee. So you'll even make money. It's crazy, but huge props to them for keeping me taken care of. And they're just absolutely amazing. So I will leave a link down below if you're into free shipping because you know, who likes to pay for shipping, but otherwise let's get into the nuts and bolts of the show, because this is a really cool episode today. I am interviewing a good friend of mine, one of my best friends and a fellow coach. It is Ryan Kassam. So Ryan uh, and I met year, uh, several Several years ago, um, Ryan, I've actually gone out to stay with him a couple times and when he was living in New York. And so 
a lot of people who follow me follow Ryan as well. So in today's episode, we went like all over the place. We got like caught up on what Ryan's doing in his life and you know what's going on with him. But then we went so many different areas in the world of weight loss in the inner game. Because you guys know that's my shit, right? The podcast is called Dieting from the Inside Out. So we were talking, we got talking about everything. Got talking about um, one of my biggest things that I'm really focusing on right now, which is equanimity. Um, like, I don't know what I'm going to call the podcast episode yet. I don't know what I'm going to title it because we talked about so many different things. But we talked about equanimity and when to use that in weight loss, how to handle expectations and ambition and action on your journey, like when to lean into to expectations and the plan, but then when to back out um, in terms of your expectations and and your where your emotions are at, the the whole concept of like your inner game as it applies to weight loss, your relationship with food. We went so many different ways with this episode, and it was a really good time. Like I always love catching up with Ryan and talking with him, and it's one of those things where I I know I can go into episodes like this without like a super big agenda of like uh, of notes and what to talk about because we just riff and it just flows so well. And every time we do it, we get a lot of but we both of us get a lot of feedback from the listeners. Like oh yo, that was crazy, that was super helpful, that changed everything. So that's what my aim is to do with this. So I know you're going to get a lot of get a lot of value out of it. Sorry, I'm stuttering. Um, and I know it's going to change your life. I know you're going to have some golden nuggets you're going to be able to take and run and change your life with. So no, uh, no, no further ado, let's get into today's episode and I'll talk to you in just a minute. Bro, I miss you. I feel like we haven't, I, we haven't hung out in a minute, but we haven't, I feel like talked in a, a little bit. I, I miss you, dude. I know. I, I feel like I've been in like a cocoon since I moved back from New York and like uh it's it's just it's been a massive adjustment period for sure well like so so let's 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 catch everyone up to speed because most people who follow follow me they uh they should be following you um and <laughs> it's been a minute since you, you sons of bitches yeah you sons of bitches <laughs> um so like so like just to give because a lot's changed since like the last podcast just in the last like couple months like your life is totally different so update update us all like what's what's going on in the life of ryan well, one, the last podcast that you and I did on your podcast, I think was in when I was living in New York City still. Um, so basically, I was I was living in New York City for the past two and a half years, and my lease was ending in May, and I kind of just had like that fork in the road moment where I was like, do I want to continue living in New York City do I want to continue paying a ton of rent for where I was living? Uh, do I love where I live? You know, like all these things are going through my mind. And I ultimately, I was just like, do I love New City? I was like, no. I was like, do I love parts of it? Yes. But is it enough to keep me here? I was like, no. Do I love paying for a shit ton of rent? No. Do I... For like 400 feet of floor. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and really nice 400 feet. But still, it's it's just... I think ultimately it just, uh, it didn't sit well with me. Like I wasn't uh, sort of like, I guess w one week, but I wasn't like truly happy where I was living. Like I, New York City is, um, it's awesome for everything it has, but you know, I'm, I'm already such a, like an overstimulated person. Like, uh, yeah, like I do, I work through my own anxiety daily and, and like New York is a high anxiety environment regardless. It's oh like dear God. Yeah. Always absolutely. <laughs> and you know, yeah, you visit a few times and it's just like, there's always beeping, there's always trains, there's always sirens. And it's kind of like, I, I almost needed to come back. So I moved back to Connecticut. That was my decision. I moved back to Connecticut and it's just like, you might be able to hear in the background now. It's just like, nothing <laughs> it's just like, i heard a car <laughs> you, you might hear like some cars here and there but like you know i'm like it's just more peaceful it's, it's quieter um you know i'm ultimately i'm spending more time with my family which is great and you know my my ultimate move is is going to be to do like sort of like a west coast tour so i don't think i even updated you on this i might have actually um but i'm i'm planning instead of just moving out to california which is like my original plan I'm going to do like a West Coast tour, which is going to be like one to two months in different Airbnbs in different cities. That's so cool, dude. Yeah, just to kind of like get an idea of where where I feel good and, you know, where, where I want to put some roots down, you know. Um, so I, I that idea sits better with me rather than just being like, all right, straight to L.A. And then if I'm like, fuck, I hate it here. Like, then just be, you know, instead of just being all in on that. Which is the consensus I've heard. <laughs> it's like, <Yeah>. fuck L.A. <laughs> <laughs> right like yeah and and you know even i just came back from visiting there i didn't i didn't love it like i didn't fall in love with it by any means so um 
to me, I was just like, you know what? I'd rather like do a couple months here and there. And that was that was like my original goal too. And maybe for yourself when you first started online coaching, but I was just like, I would love to have, just have the opportunity to be anywhere I wanted, to work anywhere I wanted, when I wanted. Um, so it kind of almost like aligns with like my North Star in a way too. And the cool thing is like, it's probably still going to be cheaper than what you were paying for in New York City. Like, <laughs> you know, it's fucked up as you're absolutely right. Like you bouncing around from one month at a time in different Airbnbs with no commitment, no lease, yep. no, it's probably going, and you're going to have a house. <laughs> I know. You're like, you're like, I want to rent the entire guest house of this person's house in fucking wherever, I don't know, Utah or something. And, uh. And it's going to be way cheaper than what you were paying for in New York. So that's cool. Oh, crazy cheaper. And that's I, I, it. I bet you're going to like some spot. You're like, I must try stop here just because. And you're going to like fall in love. And it's going to be like, holy shit. I did not you're think hope, I would you're love. You're hoping it's going to be Indianapolis. I absolutely hope it's going to be Indianapolis. <laughs> you're like that corny motherfucker. That's that exactly bastard, what you're referring to. <laughs> that bastard was right. Oh my gosh. I what love if you like just tried Indianapolis for a little bit, man. That, that could be fun. <laughs> you're like, wow, this kind of gives me like I can get my like in city fix, but it's not as big as New York. But then you like drive 20 minutes this way and you can't hear a soul. Right? Holy shit. It's great. <laughs> All I hear is your fucking podcast. Are you yelling at Remy? <laughs> That's not wrong. <laughs> Don't we? Oh, <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Um, all right, dude. So for those that are like still under a rock and don't know about you, give like the the dating profile of Ryan Kassam or like the not the dating profile. <laughs> the, 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 I don't know. Well, it, you do not want my well, dating profile. Well, if you want to throw that out there, like, you know, more power to you. Right. Shameless plug. But like, right. like, who's Ryan? Like for those that are like, all right, what's who's this like your 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 intro, if you will? Like, what's like, who's Ryan? What's your, you know? Long walks on the beach, mm. you know, wine and good I, conversation. Sure walk. <laughs> Shorter walks to like a bench. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, Holy shit. I, I um, <laughs> okay, I, <laughs> good start. I am, uh, my name's Ryan Kassam. So I have been a personal trainer, nutrition coach, health and wellness coach, as I like to call myself now, for the past almost 10 years now. Um, I graduated from University of Rhode Island, could not get a job uh, in a uh, health admin career right off the bat, so I became a trainer, uh, if so facto, through the years of me coaching and then getting into like corporate wellness, I quickly discovered, not just through my own coaching clients, but through myself, that mental health is everything. And when you have a strong mental and behavioral foundation, it only adds to your physical foundation, right? So that was my big breakthrough that I had probably about four years into the industry was, you know, I had my lowest points where I was de dealing with severe depression, dealing with severe anxiety, and I was in the best shape of my life too. That was like the most ironic part. It was like, I looked fucking great. But on the inside, I was broken. So through- Physically built, but mentally broken. Yeah, it was fucked up. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's it's so, and it's such an interesting thing too, because, you know, you, you get all these compliments from people on like externally, oh, you look great. You know, and they assume you must be doing well, right? But uh, But it's far, far from the actual reality of things, you know? So I, you know, from that, I, I, I went to therapy um, and through therapy, I've been in therapy, still go to therapy like once a month for check-ins, but been in therapy for five years now. Um, and it's completely changed how I, you know, communicate, how I am more vulnerable, my awareness around myself, my actions, my thoughts, how I deal with anxiety, um, how I interact with others, it's its honestly, it's, it's changed how I coach people too. And, and and you could probably attest to that to yourself. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. So I'm, I'm a health and wellness coach who focuses on not just the calories in, calories out, but you know, your, your mental health in, mental health out. Mm -hmm. I love that. Well, and so like, that's, I think a big balance is like, it's like why we both, you know, coach the way we do. But uh, I think a lot of people really struggle with not just the, the headspace side of things, but the, but that balance of where does calories in calories out workouts, fat loss, and 
I'm fucking depressed and I hate myself and um, I emotionally eat and sabotage and binge eat because of all these inner issues and inner child problems. Like, like, and that's like the biggest thing, like, to be honest, I, I built my coaching program around that balance. But um, for you, where do you, like, how do you balance that? Like for someone listening, like, it's like, okay, I get, I have all these issues, but I also get calories in calories out because I'm a fat fuck and I hate the way I look. So like, where, where is that balance and how do you navigate that? Yeah. Well, I think <clears throat> everything stems from awareness and you'd be so surprised. My dog just joined me out here, but you'd be so surprised Joey. <laughs> that, uh, about how so many people just have a lack of awareness around their emotions, about how they feel, about their triggers, about uh, how, you know, emotions affect hunger. Um, I, I just had this conversation with a client the other day about how, uh, you know, she was just, she, she was just candid. She was like, I am having a hard time recognizing my emotions, right? And you just have to remind somebody that, we're not born with these skills, right? Some people are very good at, at communicating from the get-go, right? They're very good at it. But most of us, we have no idea how to recognize emotions, how to uh, communicate emotions, how to create solutions. Um, so it all stems from awareness. So for every client that I work with, our, our first few months are really spent on identifying who you are, what triggers you, uh, your emotions, where they stem from, um, and how to how to work through it, but also not just work through them, but recognize them and acknowledge them and and understand them. Yeah, no, I love that, dude. I I agree with that so much because if if especially like how tactical is that for weight loss? Like my 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 biggest issue is right around this conversation, right around. Now, most people are like, I get it, Jarrett. You're in the, you're in the frou-frou space. You're in the airy fairy. I need to know how to lose this weight. But like, if I'm not mistaken, not emotionally eating is a hell of a calorie deficit. Like the, I think a lot of people misunderstand that you're, it's why, it's why that change, it's why I rebranded the podcast to dieting from the inside out. And the whole first stage of like our coaching program is called dieting from the inside out. Because if you do not do this inside out work, no fat loss will ever happen. I don't think people realize like, you know how like people, you'll sit here, people like give all the advice and it doesn't help weight loss. Like I'm going to cut out caffeine and sodium. It's like, that's not going to do shit for your weight loss. You know what I mean? Like your, your zero calorie cup of coffee and the salt you put on your chicken breast is not your problem. But a lot, of, like a lot of people view it the same way. It's like, well, they're talking about emotions and triggers and like, I, but I want to lose weight right now. But like, I think people don't realize how fucking tactical that is for a very surface level goal of, I just want to lose weight. Yeah. And I, and I think it's also good. There's a couple of things that come to mind. One is whenever somebody's like, I need to remove caffeine or I need to remove this food or anything like that. Uh, it's, it's a coping mechanism, right? It, it's coping. We're trying to, uh, it's avoidance. We're creating avoidance from the real problem, right? And whenever there's avoidance, there is anxiety and and there's issues that stem deeper right it's like if you imagine like a tree branch kind of like your tattoo right you have that tree branch and then but that branch leads back to the roots of the problem right so you know you could take out caffeine and it could help in the short term but you know there's a reason why you keep feeling the need to do something else yeah. that you think is going to solve your problem rather than we need to look inward and create a awareness and i and identify where the true root of the problem is, right? It's almost like, just like if somebody's sick, right? And you have all these symptoms, you don't want to just treat the symptoms. You want to actually find out what the root cause is. So it's, it's the same exact thing as we're just trying to diagnose ourselves. And that's the hardest fucking thing because nobody wants to do that because it's hard, it's, it's challenging, and it takes so much time to do. But once you take that time to do it, then that's when you can get through all the bullshit that comes with it. Um, and I think the other thing that that sort of, you know, that you you brought up was, you know, not only do we use these things to cope, um, but, you know, the solution process has to really, we have to, again, we have to circle back around to how, how we view the issue from a whole and, you know, how we view our approach to that solution and are we going about the same exact way are you stuck in a loop 
Or are you willing to sort of take that time to step back and say, what is really the issue going on? Yeah, no, I totally, I totally agree with that. Well, cause like, I think where people go wrong with so much of that is they, they get so in their heads around like, well, I've got to do it now as fast as possible. Or I have to, um, or I have to like, like, that's why people get upset. Like yeah, you've been on a shape, like whenever, even in our world, like it with inside coaching, when we're explaining to someone, yo, we're not going into weight loss, which is stage two until we do our stage one of dieting from the inside out. And they're like, well, how long is it going to take? How long, wh- wh- when can I go into weight loss? Hey, I think I'm ready for weight loss now. I'm like, Janet, you're still binge eating every other day. You're not ready. And it's like, the more you think, okay, I've got to do this as fast as possible. Then like, I, it's no wonder that those are the people who take the longest. Right. You, do you notice that too? The people who want to lose weight the fastest are the ones who struggle the longest. And the ones who don't give a fuck lose it the fastest and most drastic. Absolutely. And, and it's almost like it's part of that is like, where is this urgency coming from? Right. It's like, where's the fire? You know, and it's and it's you, you're trying to put out again, like we talked about, you're trying to put out this small fire when there's a huge building across the street that's been on fire for years, you know, and it's uh. And, and absolutely, it's, it's the people who constantly are trying to get back to that weight loss process when, you know, and, and to say this too, there's some people who can do both at the same time, right? <clears throat> but you have to commit to both at the same time. You can't just half-ass either one, right? But absolutely, it is, I always tell clients too who, who struggle with, you know, bouncing back and forth and weight loss and, and have all this other things going on is you know, sometimes being at maintenance and not focusing on how can I lose this weight and focusing on how can I get healthy, how can I get stronger, and how can I reflect inward, you know, those are the things that are going to pay dividends and build those habits up so that when the time comes to the actual weight loss, you now have a solid foundation to stem from. It's it's funny you bring that up. One of the we were just talking about this in one of my groups yesterday. Um, one of the girls in my group coaching program, um, literally j- decided, and she said it was hard. Like every summer, like we just ended summer. Every summer, it's like everyone's got to get shredded for summer, lose all this weight for summer. She li- she said, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this summer my maintenance summer because I'm so tired of missing out on all the like not enjoying my summers because I'm trying to lose weight and summer just ended. And she's like now getting ready to go back into her deficit. And she's like, I literally had the best summer ever. My measurements, like she's like, literally my measurements didn't change. My clothes didn't change, but I, I literally had the best summer with the most experiences ever because I didn't want to try to lose weight. And I just maintenanced all summer. And but so, and it's like, that's the trade off, right? It's like, can you get to your goal faster with, with like going crazy. It's like, well, yeah, but then you're sacrificing quality of life, balance and enjoyment. So it's like, I think, I think dude, people, to be honest with you, I'm curious your thoughts on this. They think one answer is right. And one answer is wrong. They're like, no, I have to do it fast. That's the right answer. But if I said, Hey, what would you rather, are you okay with getting there slower, but you enjoy the whole journey? Like, that's not wrong. That's like, I suggest it. But like, I think a lot of people view it as that's wrong. You see what I mean? Yeah. And it's funny, like, as you're saying that, like, there, that's such a, that's such a teaching through meditation, where it one, the hardest thing to do is when we sit with our thoughts, we're so judgmental as each thought pops in our head, you know, we're like, no, I shouldn't do that. Or this is wrong. Or, or, or you know, that's, that's fucked up. Or, or yes, yes, or no, this is good. This is bad. Um, and as, as we kind of like recognize and take time and take this awareness, it, it kind of brings us more to, there's no, there's really no such thing as good or bad. It's, it's just what is right. And so when we, when we're, especially when it comes to, to weight loss and maintenance, you know, for whatever reason, people assume weight loss is progress, right? Like if I'm not losing weight, I'm not progressing as a human being, right? However, like you just said, that that perfect you know story from your your client is maintenance is progress too. It, so there's nothing wrong with either one. It's just that you know in certain seasons of life, one thing is progress for you, right? Like we tell you all the time. Sometimes for that person, eating that fucking pizza is progress. For others, it's not eating that pizza. So it's it's very and this is like a challenge to any viewer but i challenge you to really like as these thoughts pop in your head instead of having your first instinct being to judge this thought just sit with this thought and and observe it right because there's no need to judge it they're just thoughts they're not actions yet 
right? They haven't turned into any actions. No, I love that so much. Because, and, I, and I think people, I think this is something I, I stole from Ed Milet. It was the first time I ever heard this. And it was just, just don't be so quick to believe everything you think and feel. Like we need to honor and hold space for thoughts and emotions. Like just like you would a child. But could you imagine <laughs> if you had a child and you had to make everything they said true. Like, isn't what there's a, I think a Jim Carrey movie like that. I think it was called Yes Man, where like it was a world without, without lies. And if he said, no, there's a million dollars in my bank account, the bank's like, uh, we must be wrong. Here's the million dollars. Like, we fucked up. And that's just pure chaos. But we do that with our brains, right? Like, imagine like a child and as mom or dad, you had to make everything they said or said or thought true mommy little my brother hit me and you saw he did and it's like well little billy i guess you hit your brother you're in trouble and it's like that would be pure chaos but then us adults do that everything we think and everything that we feel we go it must be true i think i might be a lost cause i must truly be a lost cause i think i'm worthless i truly must be worthless i think i should be further ahead it's written in stone by god i am supposed to be further ahead then we get pure chaos Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, well, one, one I'm going to correct you first. So you mixed two Jim Carrey movies, Yes Man and Liar Liar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah my bad. My bad. <laughs> Damn it. So as you're going through that analogy, I'm like, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yes. Um, and then also, that's, that's why um, learning to one, understand what anticipatory anxiety is, right? So anticipatory anxiety is, is anticipating events that haven't even happened yet. So, right. So example would be anticipating that you're going to fuck up on your diet before it's even happened, right? Hasn't happened yet. You're in control in this very moment, but you are anticipating that three days from now, you're going to fuck up, right? Because whether it's your ingrained habit, whether it's your ingrained behavior, or whether that's just been your thought process for the past 20 years, right? And then the other thing is the other tool, which is incredibly important, is learning how to reframe your thoughts. So a reframe is, is just, you know, basically instead of saying, I'm going to fuck this up, reframe your thoughts being like, in this moment, I'm in complete control and I have full control over these next one day in this moment, my next meal, my next bite, right? You're reframing your thoughts to get away from I'm going to fuck this up or in the anticipatory anxiety event to shaping it in a way that is maybe more positive or in a way that is much more realistic or in this moment so that you get less out of the future and more into the present. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. Well, and like, and that's the thing is there's so much power in reframing because you're getting, you're creating an entirely new context, right? You and I both know context changes meanings of a story. Like there's, um, there's a, a, a little mini analogy that I like to use. I can't remember who said it. It was the concept of how an unwelcome pest becomes a welcome guest. So like the, 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 the scene is someone's banging on your front door at three in the morning. That's all the context, you know. And so you're like, what the fuck is this dude doing at my door at three in the morning? And as you approach the door, they just yell, your barn is on fire. And it's like, oh, that's pretty dope. This guy's now like this dude that you're like, who the fuck is this guy at my front door at three in the morning to? I'm so glad they're at my front door at three in the morning telling me my mini barn's on fire because you it got reframed in your head because of full context. It's the same thing with this. That's, that's why reframing is so powerful because you could have the best situation in the world, but because of a negative reframe, then you live in, 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 in suffering. How many times do you and I see a client or a person in the DMs? They're like, oh my gosh, the scale hasn't moved. And you go, what do measurements do? And they go, well, they're down, but the scale hasn't moved. And it's like, you literally took the best fucking outcome and you reframed it to not serve you anymore. And it's, it's dangerous. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely dangerous. And, and again, I think that, that's why going through the whole process of understanding your thoughts, understanding who you are, understanding your your past traumas, understanding, you know, past events that have led you to that point, right? It's what helps you understand that that's why your mind leads to where it goes. So like almost like that, like instantaneously. And then that's why it's important to sit with those thoughts, to, to develop more awareness around yourself so that you can utilize the tool of reframing, right? Because it also makes complete sense why, why somebody does that, right? It makes complete sense. It's like if I train my dog to sit when I tell it to sit, it makes sense, right? So if you trained your mind for the past 
most most some people are, are mid 40s, mid 50s, mid 60s, still going through it. It makes complete sense because you spent the past 40 to 50 years having that be your instantaneous thought that that's where your mind goes. Yeah. I mean, could you imagine, get, let's say you adopted a dog, like we all like, like, like two of my girls were, we did not get as puppies. We just rescued them as adult dogs. But like, could you imagine how frustrating it would be if I said sit and they stood up because let's say the old, their old owner mixed commands. Hey, when I say sit, I want you to stand up. That would be so frustrating if I didn't know, but like if that, act, but then once I, that's not, didn't actually happen. But like, if it did, it, it would be so frustrating if every time I go sit, the dog gets triggered to stand up or if I say stay and they run or they bark, like it's, it's like the wires are crossed then just because of the old conditioning, then it's no, it's, it's totally understandable to know there's going to be some struggle with retraining that. But so many people have gone through decades of dieting and they have old fucked up reframes. I think it was uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza who basically said it, that the, the, the mind is just a record of the past. That's all it is. So your mind is simply a history lesson of the past with like your own old neural pathways, where if you have had these beliefs and old reframes and meanings to all these things for the past decade, that's just, that's why it's more important to now go create a new record of the past, new neural pathways. So your brain's like, Oh, this is okay. Because otherwise, if you just keep living, doing the same shit, you're just creating living the same day over and over again with the old history lesson. Yeah, it's Groundhog Day, right? And that's why people get stuck in yo-yo dieting cycles throughout their whole life. And to continue on like the the dog training analogy, you know, if if that was the case, what would we need to deal with that situation, right? We would need patience, right? We would need empathy, we would need understanding, and we would need effort, right? Like those are all the tools that we use daily to overcome something or to learn something or to train something, right? It, it, those are tools we use regardless, which is why we promote that all the time with clients is because we're trying to create change and we need to have all these tools that I just mentioned in order to create that change. Mm -hmm. and, and it's funny is, but then as soon as someone gets in the diet world, all of those go out the window. There's no empathy. They're like, what the fuck is wrong with me? I'm such a piece of shit. Um, there's no, there's no kindness. There's no compassion. There's no patience. It's, oh, it's been seven days and I haven't lost seven pounds. So fuck it. You know what I mean? And I actually is in the middle of a, a big training yesterday. And I asked, cause it was, we were talking about this kind of stuff. And I asked, um, how would you feel? How did I word that? I said, how would you feel if your best friend was tr someone treated your best friend the way you talk and treat yourself? How pissed off would you be? And everyone's like, I'd cut a bitch's throat. Like I would like, and, and everyone was getting like angry. They were like, Oh, I would not have it. I'd beat their ass. I would not have it. But then when it comes to ourselves, cause then we, from, if you know anything about psychology, you know, this is really fucked up at an inner child level. You know what I mean? That's like telling a child, you're not worth being shown up for. You're not good enough. Hey, you're not allowed to feel these feelings around me. Here's cereal. And like, that's what we're doing when we refuse to sit with our emotions, when we refuse to look at our triggers, when we refuse to give ourselves the gift of more time and patience and kindness with our own stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's mental abuse, right? It's absolutely, it's, it's, mental it's, abuse. It's, but it's not reported, right? Because it's just what that person knows it's, it's just what is right it's like if we were raised in that environment then maybe you don't see it as fucked up until someone's like that's fucked up right so it's it's constant mental abuse that that somebody puts themselves through after year after year after year and no wonder that person comes with resistance that person comes with impatience that person comes with with lack of empathy for themselves because they've just been mentally abusing themselves for year after year. And that's just the environment that they've lived in and, and supposedly have thrived in. Right. So, so it, to me, it makes complete sense. Right. But, but, but then we now more important than ever have to change that. You know what I mean? It's, which I think is a beautiful segue. Cause right now so for those listening, Ryan and I have just been bullshitting. We've, this is <laughs> not in the notes at all off the cuffing totally. <laughs> But we were originally going to be talking about finding peace and weight loss. That was what we were like, oh, let's talk about. It. That sounds really good. So I think this is a beautiful segue to lean into that on like, all right, with all that being said now, let's say the listeners are like, okay, I get it. It's fucked up. I've been doing this for a long time. 
I don't know, but like, what do I do now? How do I go about finding peace in the chaos filled weight loss journey, if you will? Yeah. And, and that was something that I was just like making my omelet. And, uh, and I just, it kind of like, I was just like, you know what? I, whenever, whenever I imagine somebody who's just starting a weight loss journey, I just imagine that everything that they're doing, everything that they're thinking is just on high alert. Right. And, and it's, and it's so hard to find peace within like the chaos of what could be weight loss for somebody, especially everything that we talked about, you know, if they have all these internal issues going on while they're trying to lose weight. Um, so I, I think, and I don't, we don't have any notes on this. So I think we're just going to lay out our own step-by-step. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Right. But you know, for finding peace with weight loss, I think one, one thing we have to remember, I, I think it always is going to start with empathy, right? This is, this is the most common thing we hear is I fucked up, right? And as coaches, we, we already have the, the knowledge and awareness, like, no, you're actually, you're fucking good. You're fine. Like, this is, it's let's not douse that big out of a this deal. fire, right? Like, it's like only been thinking, 24 hours. Like, you're freaking right, out over a cookie. It's fine. <laughs> right. It's like, you're imagining your building is on fire when we're like, oh, no, it's just a trash fire. Like, we're good. Like, this is, you left your candle on. Let me just put that out for you real quick. You know, so it's, it, one, I would say, if you're trying to really find peace and get in a groove during weight loss is, one, you have to develop empathy for yourself. So empathy means give yourself grace, give yourself understanding, forgiveness, right? That's probably the hardest thing for people to do during weight loss is to forgive themselves, right? Especially like we said, like you overeat on the weekend. You, you it, It's it's like if I, if, if you overeat on the weekend, you're like, I'm sorry. I'm mean, like, why the fuck are you apologizing? Like, right. You're good. <laughs> like, obviously right. you're forgiven, but it's yeah. just like, that for some reason, forgiveness is one of the hardest things for people to do during the weight loss process. Yeah, 100%. I feel like everything is, it gets extrapolated. Like you over ate by 200 calories of a granola bar and you literally are absolutely convinced your life is over. And it's like, bro, it was a granola bar. Let's chill the fuck out. You know what I mean? Or, um, or like people, ex- like I, my, my thing is this, one of my biggest things, and I've been doing a lot of study on this one thing. I'm actually thinking about getting this tattooed on me somewhere and I don't know, don't know yet, but, um, the whole concept, like my favorite word right now is equanimity. Um, and equanimity is like, it's something that I want to like truly embody. I feel like I do an okay job at being equanimous if we want to use it like that, but it's basically calm amongst duress, emotional neutrality, the total polar opposite of equanimity is anxiety. So, but like if if you, if you look at the most if you look at the people in life who embody equanimity, they can't be shaken. They it's almost like the, the release. The, there's a release of expectation. There's a release of timeline. There's a release of outcomes. Like Ryan, you and I have talked about this with my struggles with this in a million other areas where it's like I I ha- I would have a tendency to get so obsessed with outcomes and patterns and processes and systems and all this stuff where it's like, I'm getting a little too far away from equanimity, right? There's a balance of like, if I look at a a Venn diagram and I see ambition on one circle and equanimity on the other circle, there's a middle ground where there's like, they both can coexist, but there's got to be a level of like in the world of like finding balance within or finding peace within weight loss there has to be equanimity where like, yeah, you have the ambition of you want to lose weight. You want to get your life better. Here are the actions you're putting, you're deploying against, you're going to work out, you're going to eat right. You're going to journal, you're going to make better decisions. But then when it comes time to get into the trenches, you have to flip that equanimity switch where it's like, I'm not concerned about how fast or slow I'm losing weight. I'm not concerned about my timelines. I'm trusting that me showing up for myself every day is going to cause at the, the result I'm looking for at some point. I don't know when, and I'm okay not knowing when. And I think that is one of the biggest pieces everyone is missing is equanimity. And I, and I like, I like a couple of things came to mind when you said that one <laughs> major kudos to Jared, Mr. Homeschooled who came from, from what, what, what his vocab and his, 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 his dictionary just expanded on us. So major kudos. That was like my first thought. I go, like, oh, God damn. My, my dictionary and my fashion sense. That's oh my right. gosh. <laughs> He's evolving. <laughs> um, then, a, and a couple other things came to mind too, right? So one, when we, when we think of equanimity, you know, we're thinking of 
how do, how do we get to that point, right? How do we get to emotional neutrality? And we get to emotional neutrality when we have an understanding, right? When we have an understanding of the process, right? So most people have a very difficult time trusting the process because they don't understand the process, right? Maybe they don't understand how calories work, what a calorie deficit is, you know, foods that keep you satiated, you know, carbs can help you provide more energy for your workout, right? Understanding that process. And then understanding yourself, right? Like how do we get emotional neutrality? When you understand more about yourself, you're less likely to have a visceral reaction to something when you understand your triggers, when you understand that, you know, chocolate reminds you of your past friend or anything like that. And that's a trigger for you. And that's why you're eating all the chocolate, right? So I, I, as soon as you said that, that's what I thought of is, is in order to get to equanimity, you have to have an under, a total understanding of the physical process and the mental process. Once you have an understanding of both those processes, then you're better able to take emotion out of it, right? And that's what we say all the time. The scale spikes. Hey, best thing you could do is not act out of emotion right now. Go stay with it. Because, right, you stick with it. But when you also... Again, when you understand why the scale spikes, why weight fluctuates, it makes it easier to have that emotional neutrality. Yep. Well, and, and well, it's actually I actually said sit with it, not stick. Like, yeah, stick with it, but sit with it. It's oh, like, what am it, I? Yeah. Well, one of my because here's my my question. I ask every person who's really gives me some resistance on this, and I go, "How can you overcome yourself if you cannot sit with yourself?" Because you and I both know all these issues. We haven't once said your problem is you're eating too much or moving too little. This is way deeper than that. But if you can't, if, if, if everyone would agree to, that's listened to this point up into this point would agree you, you, you to you is the problem, right? The issue is these triggers. The issue is these reframes. These issues are these meanings. These issues are the emotions that trigger bad actions. So if you can't sit with yourself, journal about it, talk with someone about it, sit, sit with it. How can you overcome yourself? Like, imagine, Ryan, if you and I are beefing and you offended me, I want us to have a great relationship, but I'm not willing to talk to you about how you offended me, right? Like, or if like my wife and I are, are in a fight and I can't talk with her, like we're never going to get that issue resolved. So this is where I think me, most people miss it is like sitting with your shit is really hard. It's uncomfortable. It's, it's yucky feeling, but it's more of a reason to do it. It's like my therapist calls it. There's the, that's a bruise that needs poked, right? There's, there's something there. Um, and it's like, my thing is like when people are like, well, how do I get to that place of equanimity? You have to do exactly like what you said is we have to know ourselves enough to see where those things are coming from. But then like observe what your body language is doing. Like usually when people are the polar opposite of equi equanimitous, um, <laughs> their, their breathing is rapid. Their posture is changing. They're like, they're acting out of emotion. They're, they're just moving and they're going all over the place. Think of an anxious person. That's what they're doing versus what happens is when you notice you're drifting away from equanimity and you're noticing you're triggered, you're noticing you're uh, anxious, you're noticing, you're noticing you're about to make bad decisions. If you just stop, get your breathing under control, question your thoughts right now, question, why do I feel this way? What's going on? You know what? I'm obviously not very much the epitome of equanimity right now. I'm just going to go sit with this shit until I get back to equanimity. Then it's going to be really hard to make bad decisions. Yeah. And, and I think... One thing that came to mind as you said that is, you know, I think people get into an anxious state because they, one, maybe are either unaware of the problem or they are aware of the problem and that, that, and the disconnect of what's not there. And that's what triggers a more anxious state. So again, sitting, sitting with your emotions, sitting with your thoughts, even taking three minutes to lay down, prop your feet up on your bed catch your breath, listen to your breathing, not not even trying to breathe in a certain way, just find your breath and listen to your breath, right? And if we if you just do that and you slow it down, like it takes you from that sympathetic state to that parasympathetic state. And like you said, it's, it's much harder to make, uh, you know, decisions, rapid decisions when you're at a much calmer state. Right. And, and, and again, the, some, and you might even realize from that three to five minutes, you're like, why the fuck am I overreacting? Because the guy cut me off on the highway. It's like, <laughs> or the scale spikes cares? or whatever. Right. It's like, I'm here in this moment and I'm fine. Like, I'm okay. Like, I'm okay. 
right? And sometimes that's all you need to hear is when you find that silence, when you find your breath, is just to say, I'm okay. Like there's no, there's, I have the control to do what I can right now in this moment, right? I think people also like they were there, they, they judge it, but here, but I think people need to understand that judging your emotions and like your triggers is, this is really gross, is literally like judging when you go to the bathroom. You know what I mean? Like one of the best analogies <laughs> I, I've ever heard about, uh, it's gross, but one of the best analogies I've ever heard from my boy Kyle Cease is your emotions is literally just like taking a shit. It's like something in needs to come out and you need to just hold space and let nature take its course. But, but could you imagine if, if every time we had to go to the restroom, like we did the same shit, I'm not supposed to feel this means something bad. I'm going to go distract. So I don't feel this. Well, that's going to get really gross really quickly. But what happens when we feel the urge to pee? We just go, Oh, I need to pee. You're not like, should I have drank the tea? Was that water? Oh my gosh. Why is it this color? Holy fuck. I'm a piece of shit because I have to pee. We don't do that. We just go, Oh, I need to take a leak. I drink a lot of something. That's it. And you go take a leak and that's, you call it a day. But when it's our emotions, we judge it. We self deprecate ourselves because of it. And we think it's wrong to experience these things. But what happens when you go to the bathroom consistently, it's called being regular, but most people are emotionally constipated and they're not emotionally regular because well, they'll let themselves feel happy. Sometimes not even this, like most people actually cap themselves at happiness, joy, gratitude, being present. And then they're like, you're a piece of shit. If you feel sad, anxious, lonely, depressed, or worried where it's like, what if you just need to experience all of them because feeling is healing as well? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, that's, like I said, that's to, to kind of go backtrack where we were before. That's, that's one thing I learned from meditation is that, Every thought that pops through your head doesn't make you a god, it doesn't make you a piece of shit, and it doesn't make you a saint, right? Like, they're just thoughts. And it's important to recognize and, and, and acknowledge and let them pass when they pass, right? Sometimes they'll be with you a little bit longer, right? Especially if you're in a very anxious state. Someone's at the gym, they're thinking everybody's watching them as they're working out. Spoiler, nobody gives a fuck and nobody's really watching or caring. Everybody just thinks they are. Um, but, you know, those are the thoughts that creep in. And and sometimes we just need to sit with it, acknowledge it, let it come, and then let it go, right? Same thing. That's one of the best advice pieces of advice my therapist gave me was if, if you have anxiety, the worst thing you could do is say, nope. I'm not anxious. I'm not anxious at all. Nope, not me. I'm not an anxious person. And what happens is anxiety just grows and grows and grows because you're failing to acknowledge it and you're giving it power by saying it's not there. Or that's not who you are. Right. But when we acknowledge that, yeah, oh, acknowledge, uh, anxiety is sitting right next to me. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you sit with me as long as you, you feel like it. And then, then you're going to go. Right. So that's, that's, that's kind of how you have to learn to not judge the emotions, but also let those emotions come and go. Yeah. And one of my favorite analogies for that, I love that analogy of it just sitting with you. Um, because I'm a dog dad, a triple dog dad, my favorite analogy with that is actually running from a dog. We'll call the, we'll name the dog anxiety, right? You're running from anxiety, anxiety, of the dog. And I have a shepherd who doesn't get tired. Right. Um, and too often, like running from your negative emotions is like running from a dog. What we all have had experience when you run from a dog, it absolutely chases you and it's way stronger, has more legs and has more endurance than we will ever have. So, but what happens when you quit running from a dog that you were running from? It'll jump on you. It'll get really bad at first. When you quit running from anxiety, the anxiety will jump on you. Right. But then what, what does a dog do when you refuse to play with it? It gets bored and wanders off and chases a squirrel or finds something else it can play with. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's the same thing with any of the negative emotions. I, so that's, but I love the, that analogy of like, you can sit here, like, I don't give a fuck and you can go away when you're done. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the dog one's good too, because I mean, it's true because sometimes anxiety doesn't just sit next to you. It attacks you. Right. And well, you just have to remember, and I've had plenty of fucking plenty of panic attacks in my life and it's the scariest fucking thing. But there's power in understanding, like we talked about, where you, when you finally become understanding of what triggers it, why it's here, understanding that you're not dying, it sucks, but it will come and it will go, right? So there's power in understanding all these things, but you don't get to that place until you face it, 
right? You have to face it because otherwise, like you said, it, it just keeps chasing you and chasing you until until you, you can't run anymore, until you're mentally and physically exhausted. And because you've been running this whole time, everything you've been trying to do doesn't get done, right? Or it's left half ass, right? It's it's funny. There's a different reframe that I've been using lately for me with my own, like, let's say self-limiting beliefs, anxiety, worry, all that stuff. And I, I've been trying to, and it's hard. And I've been trying to take that to another level where I've heard it this way. And it just, it stuck with me is not just like letting it sit next to you, not just standing and letting the anxiety, anxiety, the dog, ch- you know, jump on you. It's actually making friends with it. It's almost like if someone locked, it's almost like if someone like say something happened and there was a mandate of this person is going to live in your house for the next 30 years. You better, you may not like him, but you better fucking make friends with them. Otherwise the next 30 years are going to be hell. If you're like, no, I hate you get out of my house and they're never going to, and they can't leave. Um, so what I've been trying to do is with my own anxiety, my own stuff that I've still worked through, um, is not just like, let it be there, but it's like, I, I'm, I'm dancing with it. It's like, I think it was, I heard a podcast with Tom Bilyeu's wife. Um, she talked about like, just dance with it. Like literally like make friends with this thing. Like you can't play the, Oh no, you're not here. Go away. I'm better than this. It's like, she, she, she takes it even to a different place. And I, I don't think this is always okay, but she's like, she uses it as like a coach. It's like, okay, why am I anxious? What do I need to do to get rid of the anxiety? What do I need to do to make you like me? What do I need to do? You know what I mean? Um, so it, I've, I've been putting even more of myself, a bigger reframe on it. Like, how do I become friends with this thing? How do I dance with this thing? How do I like love this thing? That's the one I'm struggling with is how do I love my anxiety? How do I love my whatever? But it's a work in progress, but it, it's, it's a whole different level than just running from it and acting like it's not there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I I mean, I think that's a good point. And I think that comes with more, like that's a higher level of understanding and awareness for anxiety. Because once, when someone's first presented with anxiety, they have no idea what the fuck's going on, right? It's just like fight or flight. But when you have a higher understanding of yourself and create more awareness, then what happens is you can now understand the direction in which the anxiety is coming from. And you can have actions based off that, right? So if somebody is, you know, is, say somebody's dating somebody and they're flirting with someone else and you get anxiety from that, then you have clear direction of where that's stemming from, right? You have awareness around, okay, maybe it's my actions that are leading to my anxiety, right? Maybe it's this action that created this, right? Or maybe it's my inaction that created this, right? So... Once you can, again, once you can let anxiety sit down next to you, then it can become that friend to say, hey, I'm here because you've been an asshole or I'm here (laughs) because, because you keep associating guilt as eating a cookie, right? So it's, it's once you get to that place, anxiety is just that friend on the bench is just like, hey, I'm here because I need you to do this right? And you haven't been doing it or you're doing too much of this, right? So that's, I think that's a good point that you made. It, it's, it just gives you direction on, on your next step. And whenever we don't take that next step, he's like, Hey, I'm still sitting here, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, I think the balance is when, um, cause like, I don't, I, I would, I agree with that hundred percent in that things like things like negative emotions can be are actually great to have in your life, right? You don't want a life with zero anxiety and zero worry or anything like that, right? Like to be honest, anxiety is in a lot of cases, small bouts of anxiety is what gets you to run a little faster, gets you to, um, like to, uh, to be honest, like discomfort is what causes us to move forward with goals, right? Like if you had zero discomfort, you wouldn't want to accomplish anything. You know what I mean? Like, so a little bit of discomfort is, is great to cause action. But the problem is when that's like 98% of our life is when it's nothing but anxiety. It's, I, it's the, it's the dose that makes poison lethal, right? Is like fear is like, is, is, can be a great emotion to cause you to double check your actions, like, like, or in things like that. But if your life is predicated only on fear, we have a problem. It's, it's the dichotomy of these negative emotions or these perceived negative emotions, right? Like, like, anxiety is what causes the parachute the, or the guy to pack his parachute and double check that it's, it's there and it's perfect. The guy that doesn't give a fuck, his parachute doesn't deploy. You know what I mean? So it's, it's all about, I think the dichotomy of those emotions, we don't want a life without them. Yeah. 
and I and I think that's definitely something you know we talk about clients with too is is how you know fear right like fear could be hey your doctor just told you your cholesterol is way too high and if it stays like this you're gonna have to hop on heart medication right like that is a fear that can trigger action right but like you said when the fear stays for the long term then now you have fear dictating all of your actions and if you're acting out of fear for everything then it won't lead to the a positive result right it won't lead to an optimistic result so fear is a is a great short term tool right it can get your ass moving like when i got laid off from my job in 2020 that was the acute action i need to be like all right well now i'm putting all my fucking eggs into my business like this is this is me up against the wall and let's go right so you could use it for in the short term but if we always think that you know we're going to get laid off or we're living in this complete fear environment then you just tra- you attract more fear you attract all those things that you're scared of in your life and, and kind of like we talked about before which you know with you know attracting you know negative emotions about yourself or constantly judging your thoughts or like that's where fear lives right so we can use it for acute motivation but it's not here for long term fuel no, for sure. Well, like, cause I'm, I'm sure you would attest to this, especially in weight loss when we are predicated on fear and anxiety. And that's like our dominant emotion and thing that drives every decision in life. The more you get the thing you thought you wanted, the worse it gets. Cause now you're scared of losing it. So now you're in what I like to call emotional incarceration. Like you wanted to like weight loss, for example, you wanted to lose weight. So you'll be happier right? Like at the end of the day, not like losing weight makes you happy, but like we make, we go after the things we want because we think our lives will be better. Well, now you lost all the weight. Now you're scared shitless of gaining it back. So now like the one thing you thought you wanted, you're trapped by it. So, or like, you know, like the guy that it's, it's, it all goes back to that. So I think it's, it's all about that dichotomy where little bouts of it is good and healthy, but when your life is predicated on it, um, it's just, you could have any result in life and it will never be enough. This is something I still struggle with. Like, you know what I mean? Like with my, my goals outside of like my own transformation and stuff, it's like, it's the same thing of I've got to check myself. I'm like, am I still running on the, the, the fear fuel? Am I still running on anxiety? Because then I've noticed the more I think the the more, as I get the things I want, I've just got a bigger, a bigger backpack on now, more pressure, more whatever. So it's such a balance. So, yeah. And that's so true. Right. And, it, it, and it, and it almost stems from intention. It, you know, it's like you need to check your intentions when when you're feeling that that heavy backpack on you, right? It's like, well, well, let me work backwards now. Where, where, what is my intention with this? Is my intention just to look good naked, and is that enough for me to get to my goal, or is my intention to? have a better quality of life and have more energy to play with my kids, right? Like that's when you got to check your intention at the door because if if you constantly have, you know, this this monkey on your back, this this heavy backpack, then you need to really work backwards and say, "Well, what do I want from this?" right? And is it still what I want, right? Cuz cuz we change, people change. We get into certain seasons of life, right? Like go back to your client who just had the best of her life in maintenance, like we go through seasons of life. It, 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 every season doesn't have to be a fat loss phase. Every season doesn't have to be a maintenance phase. It shouldn't phase. be. <laughs> right, right. So that's why we always have to, to check ourselves and say, what is my intention with this? Because if you're constantly feeling that fear or that drive that you're not doing enough or right, any insert any negative emotion or, or anxiety, you got to check out, check where it's stemming from and what the intention behind it is. And sometimes you just have to change that. I love that so much, dude. Fuck, bro. This has been so good with so little (laughs) notes. I love it. And and, and that's the thing, dude. I don't have any notes. (laughs) Well, so my notes are mostly record this. Hit this button. (laughs) Make sure to not... Camera. Right. right. Those are my notes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for real. Otherwise, I forget stuff. Like, yeah. Anyway, 
Yeah, my, my my whenever I make notes, they're bullets that keep that that basically are the most important things. Like, don't forget to have Ryan tell where they can find him. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, like you know, like, <laughs> like <laughs> so. Um, no, this has been good, dude. I, I and I knew this this is how it would go. You know, when we get rolling on this stuff. So. Oh yeah, dude. We just get in the zone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm sweating so much. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm outside. Uh, my uh, so I'm staying with my mom for the summer, and uh, it's humid. It's humid right now. And your boys, your boys are sweating. Man. I'm underneath a ceiling <laughs> fan right now. Like, holy shit, you I'm are disgusting. sweaty, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, dude. But, yeah, I mean, I I, I also knew that uh, this would be a good conversation just because we're both really passionate about it. We're both really curious about it. Um, and and there's so, there's so many avenues you can go with it right like our passion for mental health and um you know vulnerability and communication it just it's it's seamless with health it's seamless with health you know so um yeah i'm not surprised man (laughs) i love it i love it well where can all these wonderful motherfuckers find you yeah so you can find me in a few places so one instagram at body by ryan fitness two tiktok at ryan Cassum. Uh, my podcast three is called these little moments, um, an homage to enjoying life and not forgetting about the little moments that help shape us and create us. Um, and my website is by Ryan.com. That's, that's where you can find me. What's your website? Body by Ryan.com. I thought you said by Ryan and I'm like, no, it's not like <laughs> changed it. <laughs> oh, bitch. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> that's a <laughs> Oh, you didn't record that part for me. That's right. For those listening, that's how the podcast started. Was like, cause we, I, I didn't just go right into recording. We each were checking audio level, audio levels, and it was just like, "What's up, bitch?" <laughs> it was funny because I, I never. Until I, <laughs> that's why immediately as soon as I said that, I go, I feel like a fifth grader just learned how to swear. <laughs> it's just like, "What's up, bitch?" <laughs> that's right. I, I swear, because I grew up, I grew up in a really conservative household. Like who, who, like, like you know, like, like you couldn't eat, like, couldn't even say what we, what my mom called slang words. Like I couldn't say like, darn it or freaking without like getting in big trouble. So I, th- I swear that's why I cuss so much. It's just probably like, <laughs> like is because it's like, look at me now. Yeah, look at me now, mom. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Nobody to reprimand you. Right. right. I can go get cake. On, I can go get birthday cake when it's not even my birthday. I'm just that's kidding. Right. How's that? You want to catch us up? Give us a super uh, catch up of how you're doing with your weight loss stuff right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my stuff is going really well. Um, I, uh, uh, I I hit a new low the other day of two twenty three. Um, so basically for to, to to catch up everybody. So I made a YouTube video about the the longer version of this, but um, I noticed I was having some big issues with my own weight loss while I was keeping everything in check. Even Ryan and I were talking about this because um, there's no reason a someone as active as I am, my age, my, uh, and with my actions in place should be having to take their calories. Like so fucking low. Like I had to go to like 1800 calories to, to like, to get anything to happen. And I'm like, something's off. Um, and so I wanted to go get my hormones tested. So basically I went and got my hormones tested. My testosterone was tanked. Like it it was like a third of what it's supposed to be. Like my doctors were like, yeah, it should be around a thousand nine hundred, um, not a thousand nine hundred, nine hundred to a (laughs) thousand. Um, and I was like barely 300, but my doctor doctor who sucks because most doctor doctors don't like these kind of things, um, was like, Oh, you're fine. And I'm like, for an 80 year old, like I should not be feeling because it's not, it wasn't just my numbers were bad. I looked like shit. I felt like shit. Like everything was terrible across the board, but she sucks and said, Nope, you're fine. And I won't give you anything. So I did the whole mom says no. So you go ask dad. I went to a hormone clinic. I'm like, what do you guys think of this? They're like, fuck, no wonder you feel so bad. So I started getting on, um, on testosterone. So TRT specifically low doses. It's not like I'm just running fucking huge cycles. And I feel like a new motherfucker, literally like I'm, I, after once I hit my stride of like six months, I'm like, this is how mo- normal people feel. Holy shit. So while keeping my actions in check, so it's not like just an excuse to fucking eat like an asshole. So, uh, things are going great. I'm, uh, growing muscle again, getting stronger again. My joint pain has dropped. Um, I'm losing fat. I'm getting leaner. I'm feeling 10 times better, mentally clear, fucking sharp mentally. Um, 
things across the board are good. Um, like, sh- like extra, extra large shirts that were tight on me are now bagging on me again. Like, like my jujitsu belt is getting longer. Like my geese are getting bigger. Like my performance is getting nasty. Um, I'm getting stronger. I just feel so much better. I'm happier. Um, so and while, while being able to eat like 3000 calories a day, it's great. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> but well, I think most important thing is, is it wasn't just like a weight loss thing for you. Is like you had all these symptoms. All of these symptoms. That were causing you to also just not feel good, right? So I think that's that's such a huge thing. I'm I'm glad I'm glad you're overall feeling better too. Yeah, abs me too. Absolutely. Like Do you still need your CPAP machine? Yeah, because I still have a tongue that's way too big. So um <laughs> Hey. <laughs> no, like so. So my sleep apnea I have is considered blockage related. Um, so my tongue over relaxes in my throat and it clogs my airway. But I'm diving into some new research that Shelby showed me, and there's actually I don't know enough about this, but there's like apparently there's a lot of I've ne- I'm curious, Grind, if you've ever heard anything about this. Have you like you know how we talk about mental health, um, physical health, like joint health? Have you ever heard this? Is, you're gonna laugh. Tongue health. Uh, I have a tongue scraper. No, 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 not oral health. <laughs> I'm talking about the musculature of your tongue and the tissues no, in your throat. I have not. Me neither. But apparently one of the biggest reasons for blockage related sleep apnea is because your, the, the muscles in your neck and your throat and in your tongue, like the soft tissues are not developed enough. And like there's under tongue development. And there are exercises you can do like very, think of tongue physical therapy. I know it sounds sexual as fuck, but, um, and she, my wife actually found it and they, they actually make products like special straws that like that it's like a $45 straw that actually like it requires the way that you, you drink with it to, to, to strengthen all the areas in your tongue. Think of us, like, think of like a, a straw that is like clogged to fucking hell that you have to put on the back of your tongue to suck anything in. Think about the musculature you'd have to use. Um, and apparently you strengthening all, just like anything else, like you get the un- underactive or weak muscle strong and all of a sudden the problem goes away. Um, wow. You know, and apparently there's that with sleep apnea with your tongue health, not like oral health, teeth, hygiene, tongue scrapers, the actual musculature deep in your throat and in your tongue and in the soft tissues of, of just in here. Um, so I'm doing some digging and I'm probably going to buy a $45 straw because if it can get me off that fucking machine, I will be so happy. I love that for you. Yeah. So, I'm actually really curious. <laughs> I've just never heard of anything like it, but it makes so much sense. It makes and, sense. And like, there's a test you can do to see how strong your tongue is. And like this lady, uh, she, uh, she made a, a viral TikTok or Instagram reel that said, do this and tell me in the comments how it goes. And some people are like, I can do that effortlessly. There's no challenge. And other people are like, I'm, I can't do it at all. It's basically, can you open your mouth with keeping the, like suctioning your tongue to the roof of your mouth, then opening your mouth and keeping your tongue on the roof of it. And then how many times you can do that. Mm. And it hurts a little bit. It like hurts your tongue. But yeah. apparently some people, you were just trying it. Apparently some people are like, I can do it like a hundred times with no issues. And other people are like, I can't do it once. And it just shows like, yeah, yeah. So I'm diving into totally unrelated to this podcast episode, but I'm doing some big boy research on it and hopefully maybe getting my tongue strong as fuck. So I like that. (laughs) Starting a new series, baby. (laughs) Getting my tongue game fucking scary. Hulk tongue. He just picks things up with his tongue now. It's very impressive. That's funny. Dude can suck Uh, a golf ball through a garden hose now. (laughs) What a party trick that is. (laughs) I love how we went from like emotional equanimity to like sucking a golf ball through a garden hose. It's all part of the, all part of the process. Yeah, it's all part. That's just what you get. Jared branding 101. So absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. Awesome, dude. Well, thank you again for doing this. For those of you that are listening, definitely go connect with Ryan, follow him and tell him that you heard him on the podcast. And Ryan, I love you, my man. I will talk to you soon. And we are back. Thank you so much for making it this far through the podcast. And if you listen to the whole thing, I know you got value out of this. Be sure now, for for right now, moving forward, I have a few things we need to talk about. Number one, definitely if you have not subscribed to the podcast, be sure and do that because you're not going to want to miss the episodes I have lined up. I'm like taking the podcast more serious than I ever have before. And you are not going to want to miss what I have planned for you. So be sure and subscribe whatever you're listening to it on. If you like to watch your podcast, especially interviews like this, if you would rather watch like actually Ryan and I interact or whoever the guest 
I have, or even if it's just a solo episode, just me, I have all the podcast episodes on my YouTube. So I'll leave the link below for that. Be sure. And if you will, I have my one ask is this. If you could go and leave me a review, it would mean a ton to me. And reviews make such a difference in the podcast rankings. And I'm telling you guys, I put a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of attention into the podcast. And all, my only one ask is for you to go review the podcast. Give me a five-star review and give and tell me your honest thoughts of the podcast, if it helps change your life, things like that. Because the more you do that, the more it's the that iTunes or Spotify or whoever is going to tell everyone else how good it is, which means it's going to help more people. Right. If the podcast has helped you, it's not fair for that to stay in your head. We got to get this to everyone else as well. So that's my one ask. Now, I have some other cool stuff in the description for you because I don't want to just leave you hanging here. The last thing I ever want is for you to like feel feel like ah fired up off of the, the podcast episode and then like what do I do now? So I have a bunch of stuff for you below. So um, before you sign off on here, you'll want to check out the podcast description. So from today's episode, I have um, all of my, I have the, the, uh, all Ryan's contact information below where you can follow him, shoot him a message, say what's up, tell him that you listened to the podcast and heard him, all that kind of thing. Then I have a few other things for you. Number one is I have my fat loss checklist for you. So if you're like kind of newer to this or the normal fat loss stuff kind of overwhelms you and you're not like sure what way to turn or where to go, I actually put together a fat loss checklist. It's a, it's a five day free email course that I basically walk you through the A to Z's of weight loss and how to change your life and make this simple as possible. And you'll go through it and you're like, holy shit, this is what I've been missing this whole time. So definitely check that out. The next thing you're going to need that you're going to, that you're going to want to have and I have in there for you is most people who are going through this game, the reason they are struggling is because they're on their own. Okay. Like we, we all need a community. We all need a, a group of people holding us accountable, a place, a home base almost. So where you can go to, to get loved on, get support, get your questions answered and to get your cup full. Well, here's the cool thing. I have that for you totally for free. So down in the description, you can, if you're not part of it yet, you'll want to join. I have my fat loss simplified Facebook community. It's a private group. You have to add yourself and we'll accept you. Um, and it's, it's an amazing little spot because it's basically where I'm putting some of the best content that I have. My entire staff is in it. And we have the most amazing community of people who are dieting from the inside out, who are doing this the right way, who are all moving forward. I'm telling you, if you do not have someone in your corner or a group of people in your corner rooting for you, it's one of the biggest game changers. It's, 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 a, it's, it's the biggest thing. So it's totally free to join and it's your home base. So I'll leave that down there as well. What else is down there? Um, my smaller socials are down there. If you're not following me there, like the Instagram, TikTok and all that. And then the other dope thing I have for you is because you are a podcast listener and I value you. You have a special place in my heart. If you're willing to listen to me talking to a mic for an hour, um, I have a special coaching offer for you because the, here, don't get me wrong. If you are kicking ass, taking names, thriving and crushing it, we don't need to fix what's not broken. So if that's you, don't worry about any of this. But if you're not doing so hot, if you're struggling, if you're arguably suffering, if you've been doing this diet game on and off for the last few years or few or decades even where it's like you're starting to lose hope you feel like you'll never make it your clothes are not getting any any looser and you're just struggling especially with this inner game like Ryan and I talked a lot about it talked about a lot of deep stuff if you're struggling with like your relationship with food so you're binge eating a lot so you're feeling guilt and shame on date night like those kind of things I'm telling you this is one of the biggest reasons coaching can change your life like we've taken people that have struggled in 10 years and gotten them more progress in 90 days I'm telling you it's a game changer so if that's you and you're like I think I could like to look into getting some help and some more one-on-one -on -one attention, I have a cool offer for you because you're coming from the podcast. I basically am letting you do a couple things. I'm number one, giving you about $4,000 of stuff for free, just because you're going to come from the podcast with coaching. And then number two, I'm letting you bypass like anyone else that's in line and getting right on my team schedule. Because normally we have a pretty big drawn out, um, drawn out process to apply for coaching. But because you are coming from the podcast, um, I think you already more than likely get it. And you're, you're the kind of people we want to work with. So I can, the, the calendar link is straight up in the, in the description where you can go straight to my team schedule. They could, this way we can set up a quick little call and go over everything and learn about you before. Then we can talk about potentially the possibility of coaching. Cause my thing is this, we want coaching to, we want to, we want to number one, make sure that we're a good fit because we don't just take anyone who has a credit card. Um, we have to make sure that we think you're a good fit for the program. I actually, my guy, Connor, who is doing the calls, he, um, his whole sole role is to protect our coaching program. That way we're not, because that's the thing is we have a, a special culture inside of our coaching. There's a, there's specific kinds of people we, we work with and there's specific kinds of people that we don't work with. And part of his role is to protect the coaching program and make sure that you're the right, per, the right fit for this. And then make sure that you are clear and you have all your questions answered and you understand what's going into it and all of that. So the next step for that is just schedule that call with him and then we'll We'll go, he'll go over everything with you and whatnot, and then we can get you rolling, hopefully, uh, assuming things are a good fit and make sense. And then 
because you're coming from the podcast, assuming you get accepted, you're going to get about $4,000 worth of stuff totally for free, which is pretty cool. So um, that's it. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the podcast episode today. I I really hope you did. Um, Like I said, be sure and subscribe and leave a review wherever you're listening from. I love you and I will talk to you next time.